Welcome back to Capital Beat, a joint production between Orca Media and the Vermont Press Bureau. It's Friday, February 26th, and we have reached the halfway point of the legislative session. Joining me as always is, well, I guess not always, I wasn't here last week. Yes. Joshua Gorman, Vermont Press Bureau reporter. Thank you. Oh, always a pleasure to be here, Neil. All right. <laughs> as I mentioned, we've reached the halfway point. Mm -hmm. uh, Quite a few notable things have happened throughout the session, but I think just like most weeks, we'll focus on what transpired this week. Sure. Uh, as we speak, the House is debating a resolution to divest from uh, coal and fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. uh, Tell us a little bit how we got to this point today. Sure. Um, so during Governor Shulman's uh, final State of the State address in January, he called for the state pension uh, funds uh, to divest first from all coal and from ExxonMobil in particular, and then to explore um, divestment from all oil companies. And uh, this is something that isn't, it's not exactly a new idea. Senator Anthony Polino from Washington uh, County has uh, introduced legislation in the past calling for fossil fuel di divestment. Right. Um, so Shulman's pushing pretty hard for this. And he's getting some pushback. Uh, uh, Treasurer Beth Pierce, who oversees the uh, pensions, uh, says that this is not a great idea. She says it's going to cost the funds money. Um, we know that it's not immediately popular with um, the folks who are actually invested in the pensions because they have an option to go with a fossil fuel free uh, di uh, in investment portfolio. Right. And a tiny handful of folks who have that available to them actually do it. And um, do we know what the returns are like for folks who? The few folks who take that option, are they getting a smaller return on their investments than others? I honestly don't know, Neil. Okay. <laughs> I, I probably wish, I probably I something maybe we want to look into. Yeah, at some, at some point, sure, <laughs> okay. sure. Well, you know, it, honestly, it depends on who you who you talk to for that. You know, uh, I've heard um, folks. I heard somebody from uh, Norwich say that uh, after studying the issue, he says that rate of return will be better. Secretary Pierce says it will not be better if you go fossil okay. fuel. Um, unfortunately, I'm not an economist. I'm just right, a simple right. country reporter, so I'm really not sure. Um, but uh, we know that uh, so over the past month or so, uh, Shulman has uh, reiterated his uh, support for getting rid of uh, fossil fuels, yes. and um, he's been receiving uh, pushback from groups such as the VSEA, um, the, uh, the Vermont NEA, um, the local AFL-CIO, um, all these labor organizations saying, "Hey, don't do this." Mm -hmm. So uh, on Tuesday, uh, Shulman met with the pension board to uh, plead his case, and uh, right now, as we speak on the House floor, uh, lawmakers are debating a resolution, which uh, the language of it calls for the state to divest from fossil fuels. However, it is facing amendments from Republican lawmakers, uh, Pat, Pat, Patty Comline out of Dorset and uh, Job Tate out of Killington Mendon, um, who, and these folks are saying, hey, uh, let's just not, it's not our place to tell these folks what they should be doing with, with their investments. And so that's the argument that's happening right now on the floor as we speak. All right. The other real big story of the week was pot in the Senate. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the Senate voted uh, this week to advance it to the House. Uh, the final vote came on a 17 to 12 roll call. Mm -hmm. uh, it picked up one vote from the previous day. Mm -hmm. uh, we know from speaking with House Speaker Shep Smith that it faces a very tall task. Mm -hmm. So how big, of a, how big of an accomplishment was it to clear the Senate mm -hmm. and what still lies ahead in terms of challenges? Well, it was certainly something to clear through the Senate. It went through uh, at least three three committees, uh, beginning with Senate Judiciary, which was chaired by uh, uh, Democratic Senator Dick Sears out of Bennington, who came into this very much a skeptic. Um, he agreed to go ahead and let the issue come before his committee. However, he was certainly not in favor of legalization when this began in January. Um, however, after taking a lot of a lot of testimony for about a month and then doing a series of forums around the state, he became uh, convinced that uh, it was better than the current system. Mm -hmm. And so this, this uh, bill wound its way out of, out of his committee into Senate finance, uh, which uh, figured out the money that needed to be spent and then uh, into Senate appropriations, where actually two members of that committee voted in favor of it just to get it out of committee, right. knowing that they were not going to vote for it on the, on the, on the floor. And so, it, uh, so uh, Senator Sears really said, you know, it really shows the lack of you know, an obstructionist ethos over on the Senate side that these folks would go ahead and not just allow this to die in, in, in committee. And so whether that's going to happen over on the House side is really uncertain. Um, there are folks who, I haven't, I haven't counted the votes, but they're saying that it's pretty difficult to get it out of the House Judiciary. Right. However, that's going to come up maybe three weeks from now. So uh, this, that's certainly a lot of time for people to uh, have their arms twisted. Yeah, what, the conventional wisdom is that 
uh, Governor Shevlin, a former senator, the former pro tem, mm -hmm. had very strong relationships in the Senate, folks like Dick Sears who would help him carry it across the finish line. Those relationships don't really exist in, uh, in the House for him, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not really clear whether anybody has enough sway to, to move the needle enough to, to get it through. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll follow that up after the uh, town meeting break week mm -hmm. next week and, mm -hmm. uh, and chat more about it then. And also this week, uh, the governor pulled together a hastily uh, called press conference on Thursday to announce that five wells, five private wells in North Bennington, Vermont, tested positive for a chemical uh, known as PFOA. It's the same chemical that was found in nearby Hoosick Falls, New York, uh, that allegedly came from a, a company called St. Cobain, who ran uh, ChemFab factories in the early 2000s in both Hoosick Falls and North Bennington. Uh, we don't know a whole lot about the extent of the contamination yet. Uh, what we do know is that the five private wells tested positive. The public water system, unlike Hoosick Falls, did not test positive. And the company is about, uh, is, is, has agreed to pro provide uh, bottled water and some filtration systems for folks impacted by this. Uh, we expect the governor's office to provide more information uh, as this moves forward and as they find out the extent of uh, the contamination issue. So that's something we'll be uh, mm -hmm. following up on next week. Very good, and that's actually from your neck of the woods, right Neil? It is from my neck of the woods. Uh, the factory was situated along the, uh, the Willumsack River, uh, a place where I've spent a lot of time fishing and actually eating uh, some of the fish out of that river. Lovely. So uh, I have a unique interest in, in finding out the extent of contamination in that neck of the woods. and. Uh, one of the homes, I believe one of the homes that tested positive was from one of my best friends growing up where we spent uh, quite a bit of time uh, hanging out, drinking the water and playing in the river. So Lovely. We'll, uh, we'll see how that one turns out. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, for now, we know Josh has got to get up to uh, some debate in the Senate, so we'll be right back with Dave Graham from the Associated Press. Thank you. And welcome back to Capitol Beat. Joining me now is Dave Graham from the Associated Press longtime State House reporter and observer. Welcome to the show. Nice to be here, Neil. Your first appearance. That is true. On our very fancy show. Uh-huh. Uh, so we are halfway through this session. You, uh, you've been doing this for a long time. Anything, uh, anything stick out at you as different or odd or uh, out of place so far this year? Well, one thing that's a little unusual is that we have a governor who's in his last term this session and uh, uh, and I think we may see some of that play out in terms of, you know, the question is, does he have any degree of reduced clout as sort of a, you know, semi-lame duck or whatever? Mm -hmm. uh, and he's pushing hard for uh, passage of a bill uh, calling for legalization of marijuana. Uh, he uh, was able to uh, cajole some senators into coming around and yeah. voting with him on that. Uh, and the question now is whether he's going to have any kind of similar clout in the house uh i think uh interestingly enough i was speaking with uh, sarah copeland hansis the uh, house majority leader one of the senior democrats uh earlier in the week about what might happen in the house there's a lot of uh uh sort of sense that the house is going to be cooler to this uh, legalization idea than the senate has been um and she said that she's at basically asking her caucus members uh, to go home to their districts over the town meeting break next week and as she put it engage with their neighbors and uh, find out what folks are thinking and, and want to see happen uh, and you know I, I, I imagine that uh, some of the advocates supporting marijuana legalization are probably doing some grassroots work right, right now to try to get folks to go to their town meetings and talk to their state reps and say you know let's go ahead and do this mm -hmm. uh, and uh, because uh, obviously, you know, there is some uh, there's some trepidation about this among a lot of House members as well. Right. So it was some, among some senators as well, but but uh, it seems like a, a higher percentage of House members might be in that camp right now. So uh, we'll see. A lot has been made about, excuse me, the governor's relationships in the Senate. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there anyone in the House that sort of sticks out to you as a potential ally for for the governor in this uh, battle that's about to commence here? Well, I think a key, the, uh, you know, a key if not the key person here is going to end up being the speaker. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, the governor and the speaker have worked closely together for years now, and and uh, 
Uh, and, you know, the Speaker has a great deal of uh, clout, obviously, in the House. And uh, uh, I, I think that it's entirely possible, you know, he, he talks about how he's a supporter in principle of the legalization idea. He has some uh, questions about it, including things like uh, how do we ensure that there's a way to guard against impaired driving? Um, uh, you know, the police have talked about developing some kind of a new technology, a sort of analog to the breathalyzer right. that they use with drunken driving, uh, and whether that's going to be coming along soon enough to make people comfortable that Vermont can sort of guard against stone driving in the same way that it guards against drunken driving uh, is, is, a, um, is a question. Uh, and that's obviously been a question in the speaker's mind, as well as issues like, um, are we really going to be able to legalize this uh, marijuana for, for adults and, uh, and not uh, sort of enhance teenagers' access to it? Uh, and uh, the, um, uh, but if, if, if he's genuine and is, ends up being strongly supportive of this, um, you know, I'm reminded that last year there was a, a measure that came out very late in the session uh, to uh, remove the philosophical exemption for uh, parents who uh, didn't want to get their kids fully vaccinated. And that sort of materialized, first in the Senate, uh, about three weeks before the end of the session, and then it got through the House before the session was over. Now, that's a, obviously a big change in Vermont law to remove that philosophical exemption. Right. There was a lot of controversy about it, uh, and actually the legislature tried and did not do that a couple of years earlier. So. Um, you know, this is also a pretty controversial measure, this idea of legalizing marijuana, obviously. And, uh, but I think the vaccination debate sort of shows us a model of the way that the House can turn pretty quickly if it wants to. Right. And if the Speaker wants it to. Okay. And so, you know, that's still, I think it's still an open question and a possibility. Okay. Uh, 2010 was the last time we had a governor who was on his way out. Uh, Jim Douglas, mm -hmm. his portrait is actually staring at me in the right hallway over there. Here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, do you see any similarities between that year and the year we're in now with Governor Shumlin on his way out? Well, there is a fairly significant difference, which is that, uh, you know, Governor Douglas uh, was dealing with a strongly Democratic legislature, right. you know, opposite party. Legislature and Governor Shumlin is uh, dealing with a legislature of, of his own party. Although uh, the legislature frequently wants to sort of flex its muscles and demonstrate its independence from yes. any governor of any party, and they've done that so a few times with Shumlin. They have, and uh, you know, and I th I think that that factor may may weigh in a little bit. For instance, in the in the marijuana debate as well, um, I think you know one of the interesting issues uh, you mentioned. Um, uh, divestment from fossil fuel companies, yeah. and the governor has been pushing that hard, as, it, as if that's sort of a marquee issue for him mm -hmm. for this session. And uh, you know, it appears that he may not, he likely won't get a bill from the legislature uh, moving in that direction. Although he may get a resolution, which right. is obviously non-binding, uh, and the, even the resolution essentially leaves the decision. It kind of sides with the state treasurer, Beth Pierce, who's been pushing to have the decision left up to the board that oversees the state's pension fund investments. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I, I think there, there are uh, similarities in the sense that, you know, between 2010 and 2016, in the sense that the legislature is frequently uh, interested in asserting its independence. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there also was, in, back in 2010, even I think even more strained relations between the legislature and the governor because just the previous year, in 2009, uh, the legislature had overridden uh, the governor's budget and uh, also the governor's veto of a bill uh, which ends up uh, allowing um, same-sex marriage in Vermont. Right. Uh, now, obviously, same-sex marriage since last year's Supreme Court decision is allowed nationwide, but at the time it was a very hot issue still uh, around the country, uh, and it came down to, uh, uh, you know, the House leadership needed to round up the last one or two votes in right. order to override the governor's veto, which, it man which the House managed to do. Um, the governor didn't, Governor Douglas didn't really respond with any degree of uh, 
anger or whatever about that as much as he sort of, I think, pretty much shrugged it off and said, well, that's the way it goes. Uh, the budget veto, I think, really did leave a lot of bitterness, and, yeah. and uh, or the budget veto override, I should say, left a lot of bitter, bitterness. And, and uh, you know, there is still some people on the Republican side today pointing to that moment as turning Vermont. Right, the in turning a, point in, in our in finances. A, in, our fi in our troubled finances. Right. And so, um, you know, I, 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 I think some of that kind of tension is not in play this year as much as just the general legislative assertiveness. Okay. Uh, what should we be looking for in the second half of this 2016 session here? Any surprises? Well, I, you know, I do think it's the, probably the most interesting issue right now is will the advocates uh, muster the uh, the advocates for marijuana legalization yeah. uh, muster the support in the House? Will the governor muster the support in the House? Uh, and uh, you know, I, I think that that obviously uh, remains to be seen. Otherwise, it's you know, aside from this divestment thing and marijuana legalization, I think it's really been a, kind of a slow session. Yeah, uh, you know, in it terms has of seemed slow. yeah, uh, in terms of any real hot issues. Um, and so obviously there will be the annual budget dance uh, as mm -hmm. things wind down. But uh, other than that, uh, you know, I, I, I don't really see any, uh, any marquee issues coming down, the, coming down the pipe right now. So. All right. Dave Graham from the Associated Press, thanks so much for joining me. Glad to be here. Thanks. And that's a wrap for us this week on Capitol Beats. We will be off next week. Uh, as the legislature is uh, not in session for the town meeting break. But we will be back the following week, so join us then. Thanks again.